money mistakes that I was making very early on that were keeping me broke. What is up you guys, welcome back to the channel. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for clicking on this video and choosing to support your girl once again. If you are new, welcome, my name is Andy Swan. I'm just out here trying to live simply, make money and help others do the same. I publish new content every week, so please do consider subscribing. I did run a quick poll in the community tab around whether you guys wanted a little bit of a money series, a personal finances series and everyone who voted on that poll said yes. So yeah I've decided to go ahead and create a little money series for you guys and this video will be the first video in that series. So today I wanted to chat about some money mistakes that I was making very early on in my career, in my personal finances journey that were keeping me broke. So hopefully by sharing my mistakes, you guys will be able to identify if you're making some of the same mistakes and what to do instead. The first money mistake that I was making is that I was running blind. I really didn't know what was going on with my finances. Of course, I had a, an idea of what I was making. As soon as I started working, I had a job and I also started doing freelance work through my first business social. So at the time I had kind of a rough idea of what I was making through my full-time job so my salary and then had less of an idea of how much I was really making with my freelance work I also didn't keep track of my expenses of course I had a rough idea I knew how much my rent was I knew how much I had to set aside for my car my car insurance etc etc but I didn't really have a handle on what was coming into my bank accounts and what I was spending to live on and I think with everything the first step to gaining control and really managing your finances and not having your finances manage you is just awareness so what I would do instead and what I try to do now is do a monthly check-in and just revise and remind myself of how much money is coming in and what my expenses are so the second mistake that I was making was social spending now this is where you spend money in social settings. There's nothing intrinsically wrong with, you know, going out and spending money with your friends or your family or your partner, whatever the case may be. The problem comes in that a lot of us tend to do this kind of passively and without really thinking about it, right? So you go out, you might have an idea of how much you want to spend, you might not, but generally what tends to happen is you go out, it's a good time, you maybe have a drink or two, or you're just having a good time. So suddenly, you know the idea of spending more money to you know let the good times roll isn't so bad so you were meant to just go have dinner and now dessert is sounding good or everyone else orders dessert you're like oh i must i might as well do it as well or you're out and it's like should we get another bottle of champagne and you're like yeah let's let's get another one and suddenly you've bought four bottles of champagne which is three more bottles than you had planned on buying this is something that was getting me <laughs> a lot at the start of my career at some point i was living like down the road from Florida Road so anytime any of my friends would like go out or be on Florida Road or be having dinner they'd be like yeah come join us which was like all the time like different groups of friends right and I'd be like oh it's just up the road I'm just gonna go and have one drink or just get a little bit of a bite to eat and then suddenly it turns into a big night and you're spending money that you haven't planned for so how I would manage this today or what I should have been doing differently is giving myself a budget to stick to or a plan to stick to every time I go out right so what I try to do now is go okay I'm going out for dinner or I'm going out to meet friends for drinks and this is how much I'm going to spend today this is how much I'm allowing myself to spend tonight and that equates to a bottle of champagne and one meal or this equates to two two glasses I don't know I'm just ad-libbing but whatever your limit is or whatever you have like before going out actually tell yourself okay we have this amount of money so with this amount of money this is what we can get and once you reach that limit then it's no more right the third money mistake that I was making was credit card use or not using my credit card in the correct way so picture this I finished my degree within a few weeks I have a new job the first salary hits and of course my bank is like oh hey the girl is making some money now 
he has a credit card and of course at first the limit they give you is really low but it, like as you earn more and more money they increase it etc etc and I'd always told myself that I would not use a credit card or I wouldn't have one but I got one and it's actually quite scary how easy it was to convince myself that I could use it and then just like I'll pay it off like within a few months like I'm only spending a little bit I'll pay it off soon it's fine but of course that cycle is one that can lead to a lot of trouble because you start off with the low limits you max that out the bank gives you more money all the while all the time you're convincing yourself no it's not that bad you know I can afford the monthly repayments and within a few months I'll pay it off it definitely can cycle into something bigger and a bigger problem and for a lot of people that I've spoken to my friends people in my circle it's so evident to see how quickly credit card use can get out of control i was lucky enough that i nipped this in the bud <laughs> very early on i did manage to rack up some some credit card debts but i think i got a handle on it very quickly once i realized what was going on and i was able to turn that around there is obviously a place for using your credit card correctly and using your credit card can generate lots of great rewards which is i think it's a trick that banks use to get you to create debts to make money off of the interest you pay but yeah there are ways to use your credit card correctly so i will pay for something day-to-day -day expenses like petrol etc because i will get a lot of rewards for those but i replenish i put that money back before the end of the month so that it doesn't rack up interest or charges another rule i kind of give myself is when i find myself kind of convincing myself to use my credit card because i'll say things to myself like oh it's fine like I, i'll pay this back in three months then i'll say to myself why don't i just save <laughs> that money and buy the thing that i want in three months right so that's pretty much what i should have done instead the fourth money mistake that i was making early on was not investing i grew up in a culture of saving money so from a young age i had a piggy bank i was required by my parents to save a portion of the allowance they gave me i had a bank account as a child when my parents would put money away from me etc etc so i've always saved from primary school going to high school even in varsity i would use what i needed from my allowance or my bursary money and then put the rest away and that culture has stayed with me up until this point so I'm always saving but the mistake that I made early on when I started making money was just putting money away and not investing money and there's a difference so I was putting money away and that's a great place to start but it took me a while to be clued up to the power of actually investing your money and this is putting your money in a place that will help your money grow not just hoard your money or keep your money safe if you're interested in personal finances you've probably heard it said that compound interest can either make your life or break your life if you get into debt then <laughs> compound interest will very quickly diminish your finances or diminish your wealth but if you use compound interest to your advantage then it can grow your wealth significantly so this would be either putting your money in an interest bearing account so that you, while you save it you can be growing it as well or it's investing in things like stocks or property that will see your money growing and returning tenfold or whatever the case may be when we think of millionaires we think of superstars or big successful business people who have done great things in life but studies show that the average millionaire is just a guy who's worked a normal nine-to-five lives in a simple house drives a simple car the only difference is that they've invested their money they've put their money in things that help their money grow and over time this has accumulated into a great amount of wealth so what I do now is yes I do try to keep a chunk of money in a savings pocket the savings pocket does not yield that much in terms of interest but this is kind of my emergency savings this is the money that I can tap into very easily should I have an emergency then the rest of my funds I've just put into investment so I do have an interest bearing account with my bank that's like a safe way to invest the interest rate is low but you know your money is going to be there after whatever period you're saving it for and then i also invest in the stock market i also invest in crypto and those are higher risk investments but with great returns it's important not just to be putting your money away but to be making sure that where you're putting your money is where it will grow as well so the fifth mistake that i was making early on was setting 
unrealistic goals. I shared in the last video that I made about saving money that a kind of wake up call for me was, I think it was in 2018, where for some reason FNB, and I don't think they've ever done this again, so I literally think it was God going like, you need to wake up, but FNB at the end of 2018 sent me a statement and it, it was a financial statement for the whole year and it had money in and money out at the top of the statement. And I could see very clearly that the money that went out of my bank account was almost equal to the money that came in. So I had almost spent everything that I had earned in terms of my salary or side hustle money, which was very scary for me because it just became very clear to see that, you know, I was doing well in terms of career and what I was earning, but I wasn't doing well in terms of generating wealth, accumulating wealth for myself because I didn't have a handle on what I was spending. I'm kind of an all or nothing type of person. So what ended up happening is once I'd gotten that wake up call, I became an extremist with my personal finances and I set very big savings goals for myself. So I was trying to save, I think like 50% of my salary, which is really unrealistic. What ended up happening is I would save a big chunk this 50 percent and then i would have very basic expenses that i hadn't accounted for so i'd have to take money out of the money that i'd save to just pay for basic things and then i just didn't have a handle on what i was spending so i, th I thought i was saving more because i put a chunk into my savings but then i was taking out little by little to just live and pay for things in the end i was falling into similar patterns where i just didn't have a handle on what was actually going on because i had set such unrealistic goals for myself what i should have been doing instead is really account for my life so for my fixed expenses as well as for the expenses that might come month to month it's really important to be realistic with your lifestyle i found for instance i used to tell myself like i'm only going to go out once a month and when I go out once a month I'm only going to spend 500 rand. This might fit someone else's lifestyle but it definitely isn't aligned to the lifestyle that I live. I generally I like to go out for breakfast generally like on a Sunday morning I think that's like a nice way to kind of end and start the week. I will generally see friends either on a Friday night or a Saturday night. We might go for dinner. We might grab a, a drink. I'm also in a relationship and we do like date nights where, you know, sometimes I'll pay, sometimes he'll pay. I also like to spoil my partner, etc, etc. So really setting myself an entertainment budget of 500 rand or a thousand rand and expecting that to fund all of these social things that I like to do is unrealistic. Yes, I need to be smart. I can't just be going out every weekend and without a budget and blowing all of my money. But I have to account for the fact that there's things in life that I like to do and that get me through, <laughs> you know, the, the hard bits, the, the, the work. You know, we do work hard. So it's important that we can also afford ourselves the things that we need to to relax and unwind, etc, etc. I'm going off on a tangent. But my point is that setting unrealistic goals for your yourself and for your lifestyle can end up hurting you in the end so account for the way that you actually live not for your best self <laughs> but for your actual self and then plan appropriately for that person and for those instances the sixth mistake that i was making was not learning and learning and relearning we talk all the time about the gap in financial education you know we didn't get sufficient or any financial education in school and i think for a lot of us we didn't really get a lot of financial education from our parents either i don't know if like school thought our parents were teaching us and our parents thought that school was teaching us but i think for a lot of us we've had to walk this journey kind of single-handedly or by ourselves but the thing we take for granted is while we might not have had any active education on money we did have very passive unconscious subconscious education on money from observing the people around us there are habits that we have picked up from seeing the way that our parents or caretakers caregivers guardians seeing how they manage their finances we've learned from friends from family from teachers maybe if you were close enough to them but my point is that along the way we have picked up patterns of spending and of managing money that we might not be aware of or that we are aware of but we don't even know where it stemmed from and I think part of this journey is starting to be a bit more I guess aware of what it is you 
subconsciously feel or think about money what your money attitudes are where that attitude has come from if there's trauma how your trauma is informing the way that you spend money or that you manage money or feel about money today i think one of the keys to actually getting a handle on your finances for real is actually dealing with those sort of passive things that you've picked up along the way addressing them and learning unhelpful patterns reinforcing patterns that are helpful just staying abreast what is going on internally what's going on in the world and making sure that you're equipped and armed with the right knowledge and practices to get you to where you want to be and finally a big money mistake that i was making was not getting help one lesson that i've really been learning lately especially in my business i guess over the last year or two is the power of enlisting expertise there are things in business as well as in probably your personal finances that you think like oh, you know i've read the books i've watched all of nicolette Mashili's videos so i can probably manage this myself like i can i can do it by myself but really there are people who are experts who have studied this thing who have helped hundreds if not thousands of people get a handle and manage their own finances and obviously like those people are going to be better placed to help or to provide the help and the expertise that you need Need to really get things going way better than you could ever be even if you read all the finance books in the world right i'm the kind of person who's like i can i can generally teach myself to do a lot of things and so i that's generally how i approached my personal finances in the beginning even though i had people around i had friends who were financial advisors and they were like come you know come see me i'll help you figure out what you need to be doing etc etc and i was like oh you know no it's fine <laughs> like i can do it by myself but there's real power in getting an outside perspective and getting a professional experience perspective on your finances as well it can really unlock things that you might have not been aware of or would have never picked up simply because it isn't really your your field of expertise so i would advise going to a financial planner even if you have no plans of buying anything from them i think generally the way that a lot of them work is that you know you don't pay them anything so going to see and talk to them is free and they all only earn a commission if you buy a product from them so there's absolutely no harm in going to speak to someone like i said there is a big gap in financial education so often we don't even know like what financial products we should be buying we don't know that we need to be covering our lives <laughs> covering our income in the events of like an accident or disability or an illness things like that and so get help if you can there's free resources that you can use so there's really no excuse to to not get the help that you need so that is it from me those are the seven money mistakes that i was making early on that were keeping me broke i hope none of you guys are making those mistakes if you are then now you can recognize them and make the changes that you need to make to, to get to your personal finance or wealth accumulation goals so comment below and let me know what you guys think what are some money mistakes that you've been making or that you've made in the past or what are some good money habits that you have implemented into your life and how you manage your personal finances that have really changed things or turned things around for you? If you did like this video, please do give me a thumbs up so I know that it is real. When you do like a video, YouTube thinks it's a good video and they will show it to more people so more people can access this content and learn and get what they need and it also helps my channel grow so it's a win-win situation and it is absolutely free. If you enjoyed this video and are not yet subscribed, please do consider subscribing to the channel thank you so much for watching until the end keep well and i'll see you again soon in the next one peace